Okay, so I'm just going to go over a few of these functions here really quickly, just to give you guys like a primer on the different options that you have available here. One thing to keep in mind before we start, though, is that, you know, it's great to have these sections of silence or, you know, relative silence. This is why it's great to have room tone and film. And this is why it's great to run the noise reduction on your raw on location audio because then you're more likely to have these chunks of recording where there is the noise that was in the recording without the wanted signal, without the wanted sound. So if we don't have a chunk that we can highlight like this, then we can try to go through the recording and find a smaller section of noise, but then, you know, it's a little less efficient. The computer's a little worse at reducing the noise that's in the recording, right? So it's great to have a big chunk of relative silence at the beginning of whatever your recording is and it's great to let your audio people actually record that room tone because this is how they're going to process it, right? And this is why it's great to then ask them for that room tone in case they forget, right? So if you're an audio person, make sure you ask for room tone, see if they have it. It's great to have when you're running noise reduction. And it's also good to keep in mind that if someone sends you a bunch of on-location audio, each audio file can have a completely different noise print on it. So depending on the time of day, depending on what appliances might be running in the background, depending on where they are, depending on which day it is, even if it's in the same exact location, it can be different enough that you might want to take a new noise print for each file or for each day or for each you know chunk of audio that you're given to run an efficient and well-done noise reduction on it, right? Because noise can really change from, from minute to minute, from day to day. I mean, for example, I'm recording this and I just heard my AC kick in. So if I were trying to run noise reduction on this, I might run a completely different noise reduction with a completely different noise print captured for this audio right now than I would for the audio that I recorded half an hour ago, right? So that's just something to keep in mind. Room tone, super important. And even if someone's recording a podcast that you're going to be editing, ask them to record room tone. Like, seriously, it's going to be so helpful for you down the road. Okay, so let's talk about these different effects that we can run. So if you go to effects, we just did the noise reduction one, right? So noise reduction by far is the one that I use the most. So this one's really great. It's great for reducing or eliminating really steady constant sounds. So things like room noise, wind sounds, air conditioning, just the things that are kind of underlying the whole recording. So static, stuff like that. It's really great for that. I use it all the time. This is the one that I use the most by far. But we also have hiss reduction. So hiss reduction, let me just open up the hiss sound. So this one has a little more of a hiss, right? So if you have this type of sound, this type of noise issue, Audition actually has a function called hiss reduction, and it's just a little more catered to reducing the hiss than uh, noise reduction specifically, right? But it runs almost the same way, right? So we have our captured noise floor. You can then mess with the noise floor value, which is in decibels. You can mess with the reduce by value, which again is in decibels. Once you have it how you want it, you can then listen to hiss only. Make sure you're not reducing sounds that you actually want to keep. So I'll show you that. So it's cutting into the sound a little bit. You can hear it. So I might then reduce it a little. You know, it's just kind of preference. You know what you're mixing it into. You know what you're using it for. So I would just mess with these parameters until you get it how you want it, right? And then also if you're doing something like a film where you have a whole bunch of files and you're processing them all and some of them need to be processed slightly differently because the noise does vary from file to file, then it's good to go back and reference previously processed files so that you can make sure that you're kind of keeping them 
similar in a way, right? Because it's it's really bad if you process them all and then you go and listen and they all are like strikingly different sounding. That can really eat up some time and mess you up. So it is good to process it how you want it, but also keep in mind continuity, especially if it's something like a film where you can have like massive amounts of files for one film, right? But yeah, I would just mess with this until you get it how you want it. And then, um, and again, I was toggling this on and off to listen to the difference between the unprocessed audio and the processed audio to make sure I wasn't cutting into it too much. I'm not going to stress about getting this perfect right now. I just want to show you guys the concepts. I also have a cold, so I'm kind of blah about it. But that's how you use it. And then once you have it how you want it, you're going to want to highlight the whole audio file. So I just do Command A and then hit Apply. And then ta-da, you have your audio file processed. And I didn't take a ton of the hiss out on this one. I might actually take more out if I were actually working on it. But once you have it how you want it, you can do a Command A and Export, just like I showed you guys. So that's hiss reduction. It's a lot like noise reduction. It's just a little more catered towards reducing hiss, right? Okay, and another one that we have, let's do Command I. Let's do the crackles really quick because this is really handy to have. So once we go open up crackles, you can hear this file, there's a bunch of uh, pops, clicks, crackle sounds. So Audition has a couple really great uh, processes for this. So you can use, let's see, the click pop eliminator is pretty good. And then we also have the automatic click remover, which is um, a lot easier to use. So I'll always try this one first because it's a little simpler. But basically, it's just like the other ones. Um, you don't have to capture a noise print with it. You just can toggle it on and off and mess with the parameters until you get it how you want it. So I'm just going to play it a little bit here. And so basically with this one, if you move this threshold all the way down to as close to zero as possible, what's going to happen is the computer is going to view almost anything as a click, as a pop. And that's because the threshold basically tells the computer how sensitive it should be to clicks. So how quickly it should interpret something as a click or a pop. So if you do that, you're going to hear your computer like kind of struggling or you might hear, if you have a computer like mine, if you don't have like a super fancy computer, you might hear your computer struggling to process it. So you can kind of hear the computer lagging a little bit. And that's because it's trying to view almost everything as a pop or a click. So the game that I play here is that I'll move this up and then I'll kind of slowly slide this down and listen until it's at the point where it's removing those pops and clicks that I don't want. And then I'll leave it where it barely removes those things. And that's because I don't want it to mess with the sound quality. I don't want to hear the computer sputtering and struggling to work. Yeah, I don't want it to mess with the sound quality. So that's how I do that one. And you'll notice if you move it all the way up here, it's going to let too many clicks through. So you can still hear those clicks, right? Cool. And then this complexity slider, my understanding of this slider is that, you know, when we look at pops and clicks, when we look at the actual waveforms, they're really simple bursts of sound. So they're really simple waveforms. They're not super complex sounds. So this slider is basically telling Audition how complex a click or a pop it should look at. And you might have already noticed that when I'm playing back the audio, this complexity slider gets grayed out. So it's not something that we can change during real time while we're playing back our audio. It's something that we have to set our value for and then hit play and then set our value for and then hit play. So it is something that we have to adjust while we're not doing the playback. So I'll, I'll show you guys that. And you might notice on a lot of these noise reduction processes that we have this icon here and that's just telling it whether to loop playback or not. I always have this on. You'll also notice the same icon here and it's paired to that one. So you can, if it's not looping the playback and you want it to loop playback, you can just hit that button there. And again, we can toggle on and off the process here before we actually decide to apply. So. So I'll listen to that and then decide, yeah, that is an improvement. I do want to process it. So then I just hit Command A to select the whole audio file. Or you can highlight whatever section of the audio file you want to process. And then you hit Apply. And then your clicks and pops can be removed. Cool. 
So that's the automatic click remover, but there's also, if you go to the noise reduction options, you can see that there's also a click and pop eliminator. I'm not gonna get into that today. Usually what I do is just the click remover, and then I rarely use this one, so I'm not gonna get into that today because I know this video is already getting really long, but it is there if you wanna mess with it, if you wanna look into it. I'll probably do a video on this specific process at some point. Okay, so let's see. So we went over removing hisses. We went over removing crackles and pops and clicks. We went over more broadband noise reduction, including that noise reduction process, which is my favorite. I use that one all the time. Let's now go over, let's go over the dehummer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import, I'm gonna import the hum file. So here we go, the hum. Oof. So we're gonna go effects, noise reduction, and then pick the dehummer option here. So this one looks a little different than the other ones, but don't worry, it's pretty cool. So this one's great if it's just a basic hum sound that you have in the file that you wanna get rid of. And so a lot of times we get issues with electrical interference and that will produce a hum in our audio. So this is really great for that. So what it does is it's gonna look at your file and it's going to pick some harmonics and try to reduce the hum. So if we play back, it should have improved the sound. Yeah. So what's gonna happen here is you have these harmonics and this is a lot of harmonics and this is across the frequency spectrum, right? So a lot of the time when we run this type of thing to remove the hum, it's gonna cut into the audio that you wanna keep. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that just like with the other noise reduction processes that you listen to the actual audio that you wanna keep in addition to making sure that you reduce just the hum, right? So I'd listen here. But then I'd also highlight this wanted audio and listen with it on and off to make sure that it's not cutting into the audio too much. And what you can do if it's cutting into the audio too much is you can then go to the number of harmonics and reduce this number. So the game that I'll play here is I'll reduce these number of harmonics as much as I can. And that's so that I'm cutting into the wanted audio less, but I'll also try to keep it so that it's reducing the hum. You know, with all these noise reduction processes, the game is kind of how much of the unwanted audio can I remove without cutting into and messing up the wanted audio. So the number of harmonics here is a great tool for that game. Right, So I'll just kind of reduce that value until I get it where I want it. And then another thing to keep in mind is that the fundamental frequency here is at 60 hertz. And that's great if you're in a country that uses 60 hertz for electricity, because then if you get an electrical hum, it's more likely to match this value. But in a lot of countries, for example, the frequency might be 50 hertz. So you want to look up what the standard is for electricity in your country and then make sure that you match that here and that'll help you get the best uh, hum reduction here. But anyway, it's kind of the same as the other noise reduction processes. So you can output the hum only to hear what you're, what you're processing out, and then you can toggle this on and off to hear it with or without processing. And then once you have it how you want it, you just do Command A and then hit Apply, right? Same deal. So that's dehumming a file. So the dehum is great. I mean, a lot of people, if you have film people or podcasting people sending you audio, they're not necessarily thinking about where they're plugging their audio equipment into in terms of the power. And it is an important thing to think about. And so then they can get this electrical hum. And this process is really great for fighting that. Okay, so I'm running out of time here, and I think this is actually a really great stopping point because the next batch of noise removal processing that I would want to show you is more geared towards removing specific sounds and using processing that involves spectral analysis and stuff like that. So I think this is a great stopping point. So what I think I'm going to do for my next long video, which is going to be in two weeks, is I'm going to continue along this theme, and I'm going to show you that type of noise removal processing in Audition for that video. So yeah, I hope you guys found this useful. I know a bunch of you have been asking me for videos on different DAWs, so hopefully this helps some of you guys that were hoping for audition. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. So yeah, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, or check out my other videos. And you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Noise. I'll be coming out with new videos every Wednesday, and thank you for watching. Okay. Then it's good to... What was I saying?